This is an album that me and Jake Gosling mostly made in about two or three months at the beginning of 2011. And when I made it, the only dream I had was to sell out this venue. This is the album. And the album came out, and I had to do the venue, and when it came to the sort of 10 year anniversary, you know, I'd seen Dizzy Rascal had done a boy in the corner 10 year anniversary, he played the album in full, start to finish, first track second. I thought that's such a cool idea, like not even playing like any other song, just play it start to finish. So tonight, there's no other song than the songs on Plus happening tonight. Woo! And I know that everyone here is here for the same thing because you all went to the ballot to be here and you want to come and say. Well, this is, uh, this is exciting. This, this, this won't happen again for a very, very long time. This is it. It is being filmed tonight. So, uh, they're all I have no idea what the footage is for, but we will use it eventually, but you are the only people in the world that will see this. Yeah. 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 
Okay, I used to perform whole shows in a video like that. I have no idea why. Or how. Um, well, thank you for coming. Thank you for entering the ballot. Um, I hope you're having a good night. I hope you enjoyed the opening. Um, so this album is like, I... Um, <laughs> So, I say this to people and they, and, they, and they don't believe me, but when this album came out, I did not listen to it again. Like, I listen to that album so much before they come out. You're checking mixes, you're checking the songs all right, you're checking like, all, all these different things. So when an album comes out, I just don't listen to it again. I haven't heard Divide since it's come out, I haven't heard Multiply since it came out. So, when I was doing this gig, I was like, yeah, put the gig, put the gig, and then about a week ago, I was like, I haven't even listened to it since it came out. <laughs> Forgotten the words to some of the songs, so I, I bought the vinyl. On, on Amazon. I'm sure some of that will end up, probably something will end up somewhere. Um, but I got home, I put it on with my family and we listened to it and it was such a nostalgic thing. It was one of these things at the time that I put out and it was quite a raw thing because I was, I was young and it was all ants and it was wow, great class and university and getting pissed and all this sort of stuff. And um, I basically listened back to it and I was like, for, for, for what it is, which is pretty much the diary of an 18 year old boy, I actually think I, I like it more now than I did back then and I, I think having 10 years of uh, not listening to it, I kind, of felt, I kind of felt a bit weird about it when it came out because it got so fucking savage by the press that I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe it isn't though. They were wrong. But I'm so happy to be able to play it. I've, uh, I've relearned all the songs from it. I've been forgetting lyrics all week. It's been quite, quite hilarious. Can I get this? Oh, it sounds like it's not. Um, this is a song that I forgot all the words to.
So, um, so this is different. This is Dave, and this is the other Dave. So basically, I've never played a piano at a show before. And the reason is I cannot play piano. I can play Pirates of the Caribbean. And that's it. But anyway, so, I'm, as, as I said, I made this album with Jake and, uh, and Chris in um, uh, Surrey, in a place in Sunningdale, and I stayed at Jake's house for quite a long time in, in Backshot, and we had this wonderful piano in Jake's house, and me and Jake used to drink a lot, <laughs> as you can tell in the songs, and um, you know, one, one night we got really pissed, and I just sat, sat at the piano and just went, and just started rambling. Stuff that rhymed, and none of it had any structure. And he just was jotting down, we recorded bits of it, and then we went in the next day. And we recorded something that ended up on the album, and this is the first time I played it on the piano.
done it quite a lot. I'm enjoying this. I'm saying to my mum and dad before the show goes over there, I was like, this has, this, this has the, uh, the ability to probably be my favourite show of my entire career. <laughs>
But anyway, so my songs are relatively easy to learn because there's not a lot of chords. So I thought this next song has three chords. Maybe four. We'll see. <laughs> but um, I was like, this one would be easy to learn. I was listening to it and I was like, what's it playing at? Like, like, when you're sort of 17, 18, you start sort of like doing these weird chord shapes and stuff like that. So I actually had to YouTube an old video of me playing this song to actually work out how the fuck I was playing it. <laughs> You'll see, my arm's a bit like. Park, above this pub, and I just remember the first night being like, 
this is why they call it the city that never sleeps. <laughs> I mean, it was just like all oh, night. There was stuff through the walls. I could hear this sort of. And as a 17 year old, I just moved there. I was like, fascinated by it. You know, and I was, I was, I was kicking all around London, seeing these new places. I didn't know where anywhere was. Looking around, and anyway, the next day, I had my first ever session with Jake, who I made most of this album with. And I remember I went down uh, to Sunningdale train station, and he picked me up. And uh, he was like, uh, I've just worked with Scorcher and Wiley and all these people. And I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And uh, so we went in, and he said, what do you want to write a song about? And I was like, look, the city never sleeps. And neither did I last night. And, uh, and this was like, this was like the kind of first, it was the first day I had with Jake. It was our first like, proper session. It was the first thing that kicked this off. And then after my second day in London, I then had my kind of calling card song that I would play at every single show. Does that make sense? Like way before 18, way before I would play 18 at every show and people would go, oh, it's that song. This was the song that I was kind of known for, I guess. And, um, yeah. There is a, a, a new version.
So, um, across all of these songs, pretty much, uh, a friend, uh, friend had instruments, guitars, all that, all that sort of good stuff, and um, he wrote two songs in this album with me and Jake. And uh, I want to bring him out now to play one of them. Can you welcome to stage, Mr. Chris Lennon? So I'm just going to give you a quick lowdown on how this song was written. We wrote this song in 2009, and originally it had what I, I can only be described as like an early form of dubstep, and it was like. <laughs> With me, with the worst auto tune. It was in the time, you know, it was like the club is alive with the sound. Of it. You know, remember that JLS song? So we pitched this for JLS. We didn't hear back, but the, I've actually written JLS's new song, which comes out tomorrow. So I'm like, um, but we pitched this to JLS, we didn't hear back, and I thought, you know what? Like, it might actually sound better if we take the dubstep shit off it and we just make it acoustic. And it ended up being, I think, the biggest single on the album. Um, you guys have this. I love you better now 
singing, do not stop singing. You have to sing louder than them. You have to sing louder than them. One more time. So Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush, you all you all uh, applied for tickets tonight. And uh, you all got them. Which makes me believe that everyone in this room is a fan, right? Now here's the thing, when I used to play shows in very small venues, and I did do this in Shepherd's Bush, so I know it's gonna work. What I used to do at the end of the gig is I used to unplug it and play acoustically. This room is made into an amphitheater, but the only thing that will ruin this is if people have had a few too many drinks and they start chatting. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a song, and then I'm going to move off the microphone, and you are going to continue being silent throughout that, and then I'm going to play four songs acoustically, and it's going to be wonderful. I'm wearing this mic so it can be on footage. If you have applied for a ticket tonight, I know you're going to be quiet. If you have not, <laughs> anyway, the only way this works is if everyone's quiet, and if everyone doesn't want to be quiet, I can just keep it plugged in and we'll just let the song go. But that's not me as good. Be drunk 
A man may fight and not be slain. A man may court a pretty girl and perhaps be welcome back again. But since it has so ought to be by a time to rise and a time to fall, come fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be with you all. Come fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy. to be is listened to and having if this is my favorite venue in the entire world and having people that love my music that are in my favorite venue in the entire world that everyone is listening this is fantastic thank you so much i'm going to play four songs that were the bonus songs on plus and i hope you enjoy them um, <laughs> I wrote this song very, very early on as well, when I was about 17, called Autumn Leaves. Another day, another life, passes by just like mine, it's not complicated. Another mind, another soul. Another body to grow, it's not complicated. Do you ever wonder if the birds still sing for you to float down? Like autumn leaves and hush down. Close your eyes before the sea. And you're miles away from yesterday.
I said, uh, I said midway through the gig that this had the opportunity to be my favourite gig of my career, and hand on heart, this has been my favourite show of my career. Thank you. <laughs> Let me know, I'll be back in five. 
Does he get to everyone? I guess we do it acoustic. But this can't be a sing along now, so just sing along in your head. <laughs> Smoke along, I'm gonna sing it higher. Smoke along, went off at night. I woke up, wiped the sleep out of my eyes. She left a note, I'll be back in the fight. And I'm just waiting for that moment to arrive. Hey, hey. I was told to put my job in front of you and It won't hold me like you do But I do it for the love Waiting on the gold rush Keep it on the edge Smoking on a roll up When I see my friends All they say is hold up And remember the time When we were in school Listening to grown ups Didn't learn a thing But then again you know what You know how to sing But you don't know anything other than that learn to love her like like the way or maybe you should learn to love her like like the way or maybe you should learn to love her like like the way or maybe you should learn to love her like like the way ready Chris ready
you know what I loved it? When if it would we just again and we just end the gig like this. You know. Thank you so much, that was blessed.